This is very important implementation. You can consider this as an example of implementing logic functions by using the NAND gate. So first thing that we have to see is the number of NOT, AND and OR gates. To implement B complement and A complement we need two NOT gates and to implement A and B complement A complement and B we need two AND gates and finally we require one OR gate one OR gate and as I have already explained in case of NOT gate we require one AND gate in case of AND gate we require two NAND gates and in case of OR gate we need three NAND gates so let's try to calculate how many NAND gates we require to implement the XOR gate for NOT we require two NAND gates one for each for AND we require two NAND gates and we have two AND gates so we'll have four NAND gates and for OR we need three NAND gates because we only have one OR gate so in total we require nine NAND gates to implement XOR gate so let's do it quickly first we will implement the two NOT gates so we will make two NAND gates and we will provide similar inputs to these two NAND gates so that they work as NOT gate this is A this is B and uh, now we will implement uh, the two AND gates okay the output of AND gate is A and B complement so we will take A from here and this will act as input for this NAND gate so the output here is A and B complement and for the second AND gate A complement and B is the output so we will take B from here and the output here is A complement and B so you can clearly see these two NAND gates these two NAND gates and these two NAND gates are working as AND gate and this NAND gate here and this NAND gate here are working as NOT gate so we have implemented the two NOT gates and two NAND gates the only thing that we have to do is to implement one OR gate so I will implement one OR gate and for this we require three NAND gates first we will use two NAND gates as inverter and then we will use the third NAND gate to get the output of OR gate so let's do this quickly first we will have inverter and this is why the final output and it is equal to A and B complement or A complement and B you can easily prove this this gate is working as NOT gate this gate is working as NOT gate and the input is A complement and B so we have output as A complement and B and its whole complement in the same way here we have A and B complement and its whole complement here Y is equal to A complement and B its whole complement and A and B complement and its whole complement and finally we have complement of all we will use de Morgan's law to simplify this y is equal to a complement and b or a and b complement this is a xor b so we have implemented the xor gate by using the nine nand gates and this is not the best way not the best way to implement the xor gate we can implement xor gate by using four nand gates only and here we are using five extra NAND gates so let's see what is redundant in this circuit we are using NOT gates like this
and if you use not gates in this manner let's see what we have if a is the input of this not gate here we'll have a complement and uh, finally we will have a again so we are getting the same function by using the two not gates in this manner so there is no need to use this four NAND gates we can eliminate this four NAND gates from this circuit and we'll still have the output equals to a complement and b or a and b complement so we have reduced four gates from nine and now we are using five NAND gates to implement XOR but still we have to get rid of one NAND gate because it can be implemented by using four NAND gates so let's see what we can do first I will make this circuit again and now I won't include this four NAND gates this is A this is B and I'm not going to use these two NAND gates so the output of this NAND gate will go to this NAND gate here in the same way output of this NAND gate will also go to this NAND gate A and B so we are using five NAND gates at this point we have A complement and B and its whole complement and at this point we have A and B complement and its whole complement we are getting this too by using four NAND gates four NAND gates but we have to obtain these results by using three NAND gates here we are using four NAND gates to obtain this too but we have to use three NAND gates so let's see how we can have the same results by using the three NAND gates first I will draw it and then I will explain this implementation is very important y is equal to a xor b so instead of using the four NAND gates now we are using three NAND gates in this manner a b now we will check whether we are getting these two results or not output of this NAND gate is a and b and its whole complement output of this NAND gate is a and a and b its whole complement and finally the complement of all in the same way here we'll have this and now we have to simplify this so let's do this quickly I will use the De Morgan's law a complement or a and b here we'll have b complement or a and b and if you remember the boolean algebra I told you if we have x complement or x and y it is equal to x complement or y in the same way from here we'll get a complement or b and from here we'll get b complement or a a complement or a b can be written as a and b complement and its whole complement and b complement or a can be written as a complement and B and its whole complement and you will find we have the same results A complement and B and its whole complement from here and A and B complement and its whole complement from here so we can say that this is the most efficient implementation this is very important because you have to use your brain to get this circuit we started from uh, this circuit we had 9 NAND gates then we had this circuit with 5 NAND gates and finally we have this circuit with four NAND gates so this is the most efficient implementation and please draw it somewhere so that you can revise it before your exam now we will move to XNOR implementation by using the NAND gate and you already know to obtain XNOR we complement 
the output of XOR gate we complement the output if A and B are the two inputs then output Y is equal to A and B or A complement and B complement so implementation of XOR gate by using the NAND gate is very simple and this will require four NAND gates so first we will make XOR gate by using four NAND gates and then to complement the output we will use one inverter and this will require one NAND gate so 4 plus 1 is equal to 5 NAND gates 5 NAND gates are required to implement the XNOR gate so this is all for this lecture now we will move to homework problems I have two homework problems in first homework problem you have to find out minimum number of two input NAND gates required in first homework problem we have to find minimum number minimum number of two input NAND gates required to implement to implement X complement and Y and Z so you have to implement this function X complement and Y and Z and you have to tell me the minimum number of two input NAND gates required you have to follow the procedure same as implementation of XOR gate and in second homework problem in second homework problem you have to find the minimum number of two input NAND gates required to implement X and Y or W and Z so these are the two functions and you have to implement them by using two input two input NAND gates and the number of NAND gates should be minimum like in case of XOR gate we can implement it by using nine gates five gates and also we can implement it by four gates so the correct answer is four NAND gates because it is minimum so this is all for this lecture once you have your answers post them in comment section